Good afternoon and welcome to the Subcommittee on Planning Dispositions and Concessions. I'm Councilman Chaim Deitch and I am filling in today for Chair Kalos, who cannot be here today for his subcommittee. We are joined today by Council Members Carlina Rivera and uh, Ruben Diaz Sr. Uh, today we'll be holding hearings on three projects. The first is La Cambana, uh, which has three applications, 2018-5415-HAK, 2018-5416-HAK, and 2018-5435-HAK. The project uh, site is Councilmember Nose's district. Brooklyn is compared to one, it's it comprised of 167 dwelling units built in 1982 under Article 5 of the Private Housing Finance Law. As part of the plan and project, the first action the determination of Article 5 tax exemption for the existing buildings and replacement with the new partial Article 11 tax exemption. The second action is the removal of two vacant parcels from the plan and project. The third action is to approve the, con con the, the conveyance of the two vacant parcels from the current owner to a new, to a new owner, who will redevelop them with new buildings containing approximately 60 dwelling units. Um, we will open the public hearing on La Cabana. Actually, we're going to do both at the same time. So the second one is um, public hearing on the East Village One. This project also has three applications, 2018-5417-HAK. 2018-5418-HAK and 2018-5436-HAK. The project site is in, is in Council Member Rivera's district in Manhattan. It is comprised of approximately 150 existing dwelling units which are part of a plan and project establishment in 1977 pursuant to Article 5 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The first action is the termination of Article 5 tax exemption for the existing buildings and replacement of a new pod, uh, partial Article 11 tax exemption. The second action is the removal of two vacant parcels from the plan and project. The third action is to approve the convenience of one vacant parcel from the current owner to a new owner who will redevelop it with a new building containing 11 units. So I will now open the public hearing on both of these. Well, go into each one, just two last items. Okay, I will go into the final project. Um, our part of our public hearing will be on East Village 2 as well. This project also has three applications, 2018-5419-HAK, 2018-5420-HAK, and 2018-5423-HAK. The project site is in Council Member Rivera's district as well in Manhattan. It is comprised of approximately 150 existing dwelling units, which are part of a plan and project established in 1980 pursuant to Article 5 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The first action is the termination of the Article 5 tax exemption for the existing buildings and replacement with a new partial Article 11 tax exemption. The second action is the removal of one vacant parcel from the plan and project. The third action is to approve the convenience of the vacant parcel from the current owner to a new owner who will redevelop it with a new building containing 23 units. I will now open the public hearing, but before I do that actually, I'm going to ask my colleague to my right uh, to make a statement on those two last projects that are in her district. So, uh, Councilmember Rivera. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Acting Chair Deutsch, and committee members, especially Reverend Diaz. Thank and, you uh, for... Buenas tardes, by the way. Buenas tardes a todo. Muchas gracias por la oportunidad. So thank you for granting me the opportunity to speak in support of the proposed application for the Article 11 tax exemption and associated actions and conveyances for the preservation of 243 Section 8 subsidized units and the development of 23 additional units on East 10th Street. Located in the East Village in my district, these affordable housing units are home to hundreds of families, many of whom struggle with income under 20% of AMI. Compare this to the surrounding neighborhood, which averages over 200% AMI. The preservation of these affordable units, therefore, would prevent the displacement of these lower income tenants. Many of them are multi-generational families. The items also include the construction of 23 new units on a vacant lot, 43% of which will be affordable under a deeper affordability 421A model codified in a restrictive declaration. As opposed to maintaining a fenced-in vacant lot, this model enforces that at least 10 units will be made affordable with rents below a 70% AMI bracket. Again, these target income levels are significantly less than the neighborhood average. 
We support all portions of, the, of HPD's application for both the modification of the previous plan and application of a new one. As areas in the East Village continue to see upward pressures on rents due to real estate speculation and gentrification, these housing units represent an opportunity for longtime residents to remain in a neighborhood that many of them have known their entire lives. For the preservation of affordability for hundreds of tenants who will otherwise be displaced, as well as the use of as well as the use of unused land for new affordable homes, I ask that you approve these conveyances and tax exemptions after I specifically thank you. Um, I also want to thank HPD, uh, council staff, my own staff for working on this project, and I, I hope to have your support as we move this forward and provide real affordable housing for New Yorkers. Thank you, uh, council member Rivera and uh, Hold on, I'm speaking to Ruben Diaz, hold on. No. Uh, so I'd like to ask council to swear in our panel. Um, before starting, please state your names, but first um, I'm gonna ask you to make the affirmation. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and in response to all council member questions? Lacey Tauber, yes. Mary Brooke, yes. Carolyn Williams, yes. Uh, thank you, Lucy, Mary, Carolyn. You may begin. We'll go clockwise from my direction to you first, uh, Lucy. Sorry, Lacey. <laughs> it's okay. So wait, am I starting with East Village 1? And then, two, and then I'll read two, one right after the other? Okay, great. All right. And thank you, Councilmember Rivera, for being here. Um, East Village 1 consists of three pre-considered land use items related to property located at Block 392, Lots 17, 19, 20, 21, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 40, and Block 393, Lots 12, 14, 15, 56, 57, and 58 in Manhattan Council District 2. The development is a low-income Section 8 HUD multifamily complex currently owned by an Article 5 housing redevelopment company that was approved for disposition on December 15, 1977 by the Board of Estimate. Originally known as Lower East Side One Associates, the original project completed construction in 1983 and comprises 152 apartments. The buildings are fully occupied and no tenant pays more than 30% of their adjusted household income. Currently, the sponsor is proposing to convert a portion of the project area to an Article 11 HDFC, convey underutilized vacant land for the construction of a new building, and in order to facilitate such conveyance, amend the plan and project. The first pre-considered item associated with uh, this action is in reference to four multiple dwellings located within the exemption area, um, located at block 392, lots 17, 19, 20, 21, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 40, and block 393, lots 12, 14, 15, 56, 57, and 58. The buildings comprise 152 units, as mentioned above, and the unit mixture includes 45 one-bedrooms, um, 52 bedrooms, and 55 three-bedroom apartments. Under federal guidelines for the housing assistance contract, the maximum household incomes are up to 50% of AMI for the East Village One development. This land use item seeks to help preserve affordability of the low-income rental units by allowing the sponsor to voluntarily dissolve their status as an Article 5 redevelopment housing company and convert to an Article 11 HGFC, requiring them to enter into a regulatory agreement restricting the use of the development to low-income rental housing. They will also enter into a new HAP contract for 20 years. The sponsor also seeks to terminate their current tax exemption and enter into a new partial, ar partial Article 11 tax exemption for a period of 40 years that will coincide with the term of the regulatory agreement. The second pre-considered item associated um, with this number is the conveyance. The conveyance will, uh, this will allow for the conveyance of Block 392, Lot 40, also known as 645 East 9th Street, to an affiliate of the sponsor who will construct the new building. The new owner will comply with a restrictive covenant placed on Block 392, Lot 40, that stipulates 30% of the total unit count be set aside for households with the following AMIs. 10% of the units will be affordable to households at or below 70% of AMI, and 20% of the units will be affordable to households at or below 130% of AMI. The balance of the units will, uh, will be rented at market rates. 10% of the units shall be leased to 70% AMI tenants, and an additional 20% of the units shall be leased to 130% AMI tenants. 
The third pre-considered item um, will revise the original plan and project comprised of, comprised of Block 392, Lot 17, 19, 20, 21, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 40, and Block 393, Lots 12, 14, 15, 56, 57, and 58. The plan and project is now proposed to be modified by deleting from the areas described in the plan and project to exclude Block 392, Lot 40, in order to facilitate the new construction of one new building with 11 units. In order to facilitate the development of the East Village 1 HGFC, HPD is before the council today seeking approval of the three pre-considered land use items associated with the project. Okay, so that was for East Village 1, and this is for East Village 2. <laughs> well, so before you go further, does any members uh, have any questions? No. No. Any members of the public? No. Move on. Okay. East Village 2 consists of three pre-considered land use items related to property lo located at Block 392, Lots 22, 48, 50, 51, and 52, Block 393, Lots 59 and 60, and Block 395, Lots 1, 3, and 5 in Manhattan Council District 2. The development is a low-income Section 8 HUD multifamily development currently owned by an Article 5 housing redevelopment company that was approved for disposition on December 5, 1977 by the Board of Estimate. Originally known as Lower East Side 2 Associates, the original project completed construction in 1983 and comprises 91 apartments, including one uh, two-bedroom unit for the superintendent. The buildings are fully occupied and no tenant pays more than 30% of their adjusted household income. As noted in the previous testimony regarding East Village 1, the sponsor is proposing to convert a portion of the project area to an Article 11 HGFC, convey underutilized vacant land for the construction of a new building, and in order to facilitate such conveyance, amend the plan and project. The first pre-considered item associated uh, with this land use number is in reference to four multiple dwellings located within an exemption area at Block 392, Lots 22, 48, and Block 35, Lots 1 and 3. The buildings comprise 91 units, as mentioned above, and the unit mixture includes 11 one-bedroom, 41 two-bedroom, 28 three-bedroom, and 11 four-bedroom apartments. Under federal guidelines for the housing assistance contract, the maximum household incomes are up to 80% of AMI. This land use item seeks to help preserve affordability of the low-income rental units by allowing the sponsor to voluntarily dissolve their status as an Article 5 redevelopment housing company and convert to an Article 11 HGFC, requiring them to enter into a regulatory agreement restricting the use of the development to low-income rental housing. They will also enter into a new HAP contract for 20 years. The sponsor also seeks to terminate their current tax exemption and enter into a new partial Article 11 tax exemption for a period of 40 years that will coincide with the term of the regulatory agreement. <laughs> the second pre-considered item will allow for the conveyance of Block 393, Lot 59, also known as 351 to 353 East 10th Street, to an affiliate of the sponsor who will construct the new building. The new owner will comply with a restrictive covenant placed on Block 393, Lot 59 that will provide affordable units at the greater of 39% uh, of all units at or below 130% of AMI, which includes a portion of units affordable to people at or below 70% of AMI, or a minimum of three units will be at 130% of AMI, and an additional minimum of eight units will be at 70% of AMI. The third pre-considered item will revise the original plan and project comprised of Block 392, Lots 22, 48, 50, 51, and 52, Block 393, lots 59 and 60, and Block 395, lots 1, 3, and 5. The plan and project is now proposed to be modified by deleting Block 393, lot 59 from the areas described in the plan and project to exclude in order to facilitate the new construction of one new building with 23 units. In order to facilitate the development of the East Village 2 HGFC, HPD is before the council today seeking approval of the three pre-considered items associated with the project. Done? Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, first of all, I want to, I'd like to thank you for um, the lengthy briefing and uh, and, and uh, the questions and answers that you provided, and it made uh, me personally happy. And I just want to thank Carlina Rivera for her advocacy on behalf of her constituents and the community as a whole uh, for her advocacy in fighting for affordability um, to make sure that people um, have a place to live and. And uh, we all know that it's always difficult to make ends meet, and she's been a champion. 
uh, not only here in the council, but for the district and for the entire city. So um, I will now. Um, oh, okay. So, okay. So we'll um, marry, so I guess you're next. Thank you, council members. I'm here just if there are questions for the owner. My firm represents the owners of the project. Okay, so any questions from the members of the council? Any questions from the public? No, we'll go to that soon if you do have yeah. questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Carolyn? I'm here to answer questions on behalf of HPD if there are any questions the council may have regarding the tax exemption. Colleagues? No? No, no questions. So, so are there any members of the public here on East Village 102? Any members of the public here on East Village 102? No. Any members of the public here for La Cabana? No. Seeing none. Okay, so we're going to close the hearing now on East Village 102, and then we'll uh, move on to La Cabana. Okay. We're all the same people for this one. Okay, so, so we're going to do the same thing. And then I'll do the we're going to go again. clockwise. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to ask the council to remind you something. I'm just going to remind everyone that they're still under oath and to please state their names again before speaking. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so Lacey. <laughs> Lacey Tauber, HPD. Yeah. Um, all right. La Cabana Houses consists of three pre-considered land use items related to property located at block 3022, lot 16 and 25, um, and block 3031, lot 18, in Brooklyn Council District 34. The development is a low-income Section 8 HUD multifamily development currently owned by an Article 5 housing redevelopment company that was approved for disposition on December 16, 1982 by the Board of Estimate. The original project provided for the construction of three buildings with 167 units, including a superintendent's unit and 76 parking spaces. To date, all the rental units are occupied. However, the parking spaces have not been used in over a decade. Currently, the sponsor is proposing to convert a portion of the project area to an Article 11 HGFC, convey the underutilized parking lot for the construction of a new building, and in order to facilitate such conveyance, amend the plan and project. The first pre-considered item consists of the three original multiple dwellings located within exemption area block, block 3022, part of lot 16, lot 25, block 3031, part of lot 18. The buildings comprise 167 units, as mentioned above, and the unit mixture includes 53 one-bedroom, 34 two-bedroom, and 83 bedrooms. Under federal guidelines for the housing assistance contract, the maximum household incomes are up to 50% of AMI. This land use item seeks to help preserve affordability of the low-income rental units by allowing the sponsor to voluntarily dissolve their status as an Article 5 redevelopment housing company and convert to an Article 11 HGFC requiring them to enter into a regulatory agreement restricting the use of the development to low-income rental housing. They will al also enter, enter into a new HAP contract for 20 years. The sponsor also seeks to terminate their current tax exemption and enter into a new partial Article 11 tax exemption for a period of 35 years that will coincide with the term of the regulatory agreement. The next pre-considered item will allow for the conveyance of development parcel A and development parcel B to two separate affiliates of the sponsor who will construct the new building. The new owners will comply with a restrictive covenant placed on the development parcels requiring in the new project 25% of the dwelling units to be affordable to persons at or below 40% of AMI, 10% of the dwelling units to be um, affordable to persons at or below 80% of AMI, and 10% of the dwelling units affordable to persons at or below 100% of AMI, and 5% of the dwelling units to be affordable to persons at or below 135% AMI. That amounts to 50% of the total unit count um, being affordable at or below 135% of AMI. The balance of the units will be market rate. The unit types have yet to be determined. The third pre-considered land use item seeks to modify the original project, uh, sorry, plan and project by deleting from the area described in such plan and project those portions of block 3022, part of lot 16, and block 3031, part of lot 18, aka as development parcel A and development parcel B, in order to facilitate the new construction of one new building with 60 units across both lots. Development parcel A and development parcel B will no longer be part of the plan and project. 
In order to facilitate the development of the new housing units and continued affordability at Lacamania Houses, HPD is before the council today seeking approval of all three pre-considered land use items described above. Thank you very much. Any questions? No questions? Okay. Um, we're going to take a brief. Oh. I, any testimony? Anyone? Mary? Carolyn? On this? They're just here for questions. Just here to answer questions. Okay, I thought so. Uh, any members of the public here to testify for La Cabana? Can I give I a see. shout out to I Alex from Councilmember Reynoso's office, who's been the organizer in this building and has done a great job communicating with the tenants on this project. Right. <laughs> All right, see none. I now close the hearing on La Cabana, and uh, we'll do. Uh, we'll just take a short pause. Yeah, we take a short pause. We're just waiting for um, the quorum. So stand by. Okay. Be patient. Thank you.
I know I I now call a vote to approve preconsidered LUs La Cabana, preconsidered LUs East Village One, and preconsidered LUs East East Village Two. Council, please call the roll. This is a vote to approve um, preconsidered 20185417 HAM, vote to approve 20185418 HAM, 20185436 HAM, 20185419 HAM, 20185420 HAM, 20185423 HAM, 20185415 HAK, 20185416 HAK, and 20185435 HAK. Um, Councilmember Gibson. I vote aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Yes. All the pre-considered LUs on today's calendar are approved and referred to the full land use committee. Thank you. I'd like to thank the council and the land use staff for paying for today's hearing, the members of the public, and my colleagues for attending. The meeting is hereby adjourned.